Hey folks, School Leader Red here. Just wanted to uh, make a little video, try and help some of y'all get a little bit better gas mileage out of your buses. So, the biggest factor in fuel economy with a large vehicle, such as a bus, it, whether it's a cab over, cutaway, or a full-size bus, the best way to get the best fuel mileage out of it is actually an all in how you drive as well as the necessary maintenance. The maintenance being check your air filters frequently, keep your oil changed, keep all your fluids topped up, and also make sure your tire pressures are proper at all times. Doesn't seem like much, but it actually makes a big difference. The next thing is in how you drive. A lot of people refer to it as hypermiling. I just like to refer to it as driving properly. So when you're driving something like a bus, you don't necessarily drive it the way you would your regular vehicle. Buses get noticeably worse mileage than cars due to size, weight, and gearing. The best way to combat that, I like to refer to it as driving like a grandma. It's shaped like a brick, it's not aerodynamic, and they're usually underpowered or undergeared for highway and most roadway dr driving with the exception of a few. Now, just because the speedometer on your bus shows that it will do 80 miles an hour, you never should. When driving our bus, 92 four window with a gas 350. I average 16 miles to the gallon in this bus at 50 to 55 miles an hour everywhere I go. Now, I do not get in a hurry and that is the key thing. Uh, a lot of folks when you are at a red light and the light turns green your first thought is to get that big brick moving so you're not hindering the people behind you being slow, sluggish. It can get aggravating driving slower and taking your time. It will save you a lot of money in gas if you do it right. It usually takes between, I'd say, 12 to 20 seconds for your average bus to get up to 45 miles an hour if you drive it in a grandma fashion. The biggest thing that eats your fuel mileage is honestly a heavy foot. Have a light foot, feather the gas, don't get in a hurry. As well as if you have a tachometer, an RPM gauge. If you're in a gas bus, Try to keep it under 4,000 RPMs if you can. That keeps you out of the power curve of your camshaft, which will help you get more fuel mileage. If you're in a diesel bus, 1,800 to 2,200 RPMs will be your sweet spot where you'll get the best fuel economy, typically. There are a few exceptions I honestly don't believe we have any of those exceptions in our bus or in our group sorry now with a diesel bus you want to drive it a little bit differently um, the lower the RPM the more fuel economy you get diesel buses have more torque more pulling power with that if you're going up and down mountains or steep hills, anything other than flat, hot, flat-ish highway driving, you're going to be fighting your fuel efficiency. When going up hills, try to stay under 2,500 RPMs at the highest to maintain some semblance of fuel efficiency. The higher you get in your RPMs, the more you're going to watch the gas gauge just trickle from full to empty in any vehicle. Now, 
Weight is another big factor. Our four-window bus has a gross vehicle weight rating of 14,000 pounds. Our bus, fully built out, weighs a little over 6,000. I built our bus light to help with fuel efficiency. It is, it's incredibly easy to build a bus in a lightweight manner. What I mean is always take into consideration the weight of everything you use as far as materials, possessions, appliances, batteries. Solar battery banks have a lot of weight to them. One thing you can do is to make sure that your batteries are equally weight distributed on your bus. My personal opinion, your battery bank should be in the back of your bus as close to the back door and centered because if your bus leans to one side or the other it throws off the aerodynamics makes more drag affects your fuel economy <sighs> uh, let's see water tanks as well propane tanks all the things in your bus that are a lot of weight also take into consideration my bus the fuel tank is in the center at the back some buses the fuel tank is on the passenger or driver side take into account that weight and what side it's on when you do your build to try and get your build weight leveled out and somewhat proportionate may not think it would but a bus that has 1500 pounds more on one side than the other versus a bus of the same weight that is weight proportioned you can see between a one and three mile difference in the fuel economy of the properly weighted, weight distributed bus and the bus that leans a little to one side. Uh, trying to keep my thoughts here, trying to keep this short. I, I could babble about this for a couple hours, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to make y'all suffer. Uh, then again, back to it. The biggest factor is all in how you drive. If you'd like an in depth, Look up hypermiling on YouTube. Watch a couple videos. Watch how people drive. And that is honestly your biggest factor in getting better fuel mileage. Now also, take into consideration if you're driving through places where there is a lot of headwind, you know, five, six, seven mile an hour wind blowing at the front of your bus on top of the speed you're going, increases your drag, decreases your fuel efficiency. Days like that might not be a bad idea. Find somewhere to kick off the side of the road, relax for a little bit, let the wind settle down. Uh, or you can just power through it and burn through more fuel. In my experience, the way I drive large vehicles, mind you, I have been driving large vehicles, 18-wheelers and even larger, uh, for over a decade. And in my experience... When you're on the interstate, once you get over 55 miles an hour, you're going to start losing between 5 and 9% fuel economy per every couple miles over that you go. So if your bus typically gets 14 miles to the gallon on the interstate at 55 in optimal conditions, as soon as you hit 70, you're looking at 10 miles per gallon. Now... My outlook on that is, why do you need to go 70 miles an hour in your house? Doesn't make sense. If you stay at a nice, steady 50-55 everywhere you go, let traffic get mad. There's another lane, they can go around. They can use their horn. They can flick you off. They're not paying your fuel bill. Do not let traffic intimidate you into getting horrible fuel mileage. Now, I will pause at this, do because this is already almost 10 minutes of me babbling. If any of you would like more in-depth on this and other ways to get better fuel economy, feel free to reach out. I'm always available, always happy to help. If you can't get a hold of me, reach out to one of the other admins, Schoolie Steve or William. We'd be happy to answer any questions you have. And we're always happy to help. Happy adventures.